Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to this edition of Belmont Journal. Today is uh, Wednesday, May 22, 2024. And with me today is another episode of Chat with the Chair with our current chairman of the Select Board, Roy Epstein. Nice, nice to see you, Roy. Nice to see you. Always a pleasure. You're a courageous man to come and sit in the hot seat. But well, I've, I think I've survived it twice before. So far, so good. So far, so good. So, since our last one and now, you have a new, sort of a new claim to fame, you know? We had the highly successful Dancing with the Belmont Stars recently. Yes. You looked so dashing in your tux. Well, I'll you, tell you. You know, that is the only time in my life I've worn a tuxedo. Really? But it was great. Well, it, it look, it's something that you, it's a good look for you. Yes, Very distinguished. So, it made you look so flowing and so graceful no, on the was, dance floor. That was my partner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a look. Well, that's okay. Well, I appreciate the candor, but you looked great. Was it fun to do? It looked yes. like a lot of work to prep for that. Uh, you know, I practiced for about three months to do a minute and a half routine, but uh, hopefully, hopefully the next time it goes faster. But it was fun. It's a, it's a whole new thing. For me, never done it before. Never too old to try something new, though. What what made you do it? I mean, if you'd never done this before, you had no background in any type of dancing other than maybe at a wedding after a few cocktails yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But per personal challenge. Really? Yeah. Well, you met it. You met it with uh, with courage, and you did very well. Quite well, frankly, you got great applause. You didn't fall down. You didn't drop your did, partner. Yes, <laughs> was... didn't step on her. No, but now we're even working on something else for next year. So. Oh, you bet. You didn't give it up. You've continued. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Because uh, it's a, it's really interesting. People should try it. So it's something. If you've never done it before, you, you wouldn't believe what goes into it. Well, it, it, the finished product was terrific, and we had a whole bunch. We had uh, jo the producer of this show, Joanna Julius. Yeah. She looked splendid in her red dress, the she lady did. in red. Yes. We had some teachers. What a wide variety of people. So it, it, it was a fun event, mm -hmm. and I hope they do it again. I think the women's club raised some dough. Yeah, and it was a packed house. Everybody said it was one of the most enjoyable evenings they ever had. It really was. Yeah. So, well, keep that up. We'll look forward to, uh, you know, maybe we'll see you on, uh, what's that, TikTok. Maybe you can do some little little TikTok thing. Yeah, but it won't be a tuxedo. I might be dressed as a scarecrow next oh, time. Oh, well, so that'll we'll work. <laughs> Whatever the theme. Whatever the theme. Well, that's good. Okay, so uh, about a month ago we had the election. You wanted to yeah. chat about all your, your view of the election, election recap. What, yeah. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? And then we'll move into some meteor topics. Well, I, I think it was a good election. Turnout was high. Uh, great participation. Um, I was very relieved the override passed. If it hadn't passed, I think the town would be in serious <clears throat> trouble. Uh, I was personally interested in the assessor question. I think that that really completes uh, the restructuring of the financial side of town government. Uh, I think we'll be better off for it. Uh, the select board race, Matt, uh, I think is a quick study. Uh, board is working well, so I think uh, it all turned out quite well. Well, I know that the uh, the assessor uh, situation, having done the the nightly, uh, you know, reporting the, uh, on on at Belmont Media with yeah. Joanna and Anne Marie Mahoney, we were watching the results come in, and it was pretty close. I think we left it, and it was a uh, it was a uh, keep them elected. Yes, by what? I think 11. I, or, yeah, I was, or, and then they did a recount. I was confused over the evening. because uh, Finally, on election night, it ended up uh, winning by 11. Then there was a recount, and the final is a one by four. Four. So there you go. Every vote counts. Every vote counts. And I think what people should also appreciate, given the times we live in, is the, the care with which uh, Ellen Cushman and the team did the recount was very impressive. The level of security uh, to make sure every ballot is counted, record keeping, double checking, everything was, uh, it's a model for how election, an election should be run. Well, I know that they do a lot of work on regular elections and they, when you do the recounts, you know, you have to account for every piece of paper and every ballot, every absentee one, every, every mail-in one, every dropped off one, and every provisional one. I don't know when the last time there was a recount for a townwide office, but it also triggered all sorts of things I hadn't actually seen in action before, like the uh, registrars of voters actually were sitting at the recount and had to judge uh, potentially disputed ballots. And then they would turn to referees and say, do you accept it? Do you accept it? And uh, so it's, it's a very uh, legitimate recount and with great care. It was good to see. 
Well, there you go. At least we didn't have, uh, what was it, Bush v. Gore, I guess, with dangling chads. We didn't have the punch punch out things with uh, with dangling chads and Mark chads and no, <laughs> no chad talk. No chad. <laughs> but I heard dots instead of fill in the oval. I heard fill in the oval, but then cross it all out and fill in the other oval. Well, I've heard all kinds of crazy things. And there's a protocol of somebody marks with an X instead of filling the dot. At one point, is an X good enough to count as an X? So. Nope. There we go. I don't know. It's not that difficult to process, but uh, it is what it is. You know what was surprising about that? Yeah. Because my wife was working, was one of the counters in the recount, uh, and she said the surprising number of blanks, a very large number of people that just didn't vote for the topic for whatever reason. Yes. Just blank votes. Hundreds of blank hundred, votes. Hundred, for people who voted for other offices. Oh, yes. They filled yeah. a ballot. They went to the polls. They did some things. But hundreds of blank votes on that question. When, and it, when, and it, it succeeded by four. Four. Yeah. Out of the whole. Yeah, that, that was a striking people. fact. Yeah. So, all right. And we got $8.4 million worth of an override. So we will save that for another discussion. Um, but it'll be interesting to see where that money goes. I guess we'll know soon enough at the upcoming town meetings. Oh, yeah. No, the budget's all ready to go. All right. Well, I'll take a look at it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm saving it with bated breath. What can I tell you? So, uh, okay. So, election recap. So, since then, we've had some two projects going. One is more pressing at the moment to the other. But we have two holes in the ground. We have the what used to be the what I think is the iconic library, but that's now gone and a big hole in the ground. Yep. And then we have the Belmont skating rink that was built, I don't know, back when Bobby O was playing. Yes. And that's a big hole in the ground. <laughs> we have some designs, but the rink apparently, uh, some of the estimates have come in higher than what was anticipated. So there seems to be a shortfall in some aspect or in estimates. So Estimate, here's the question. What's up with the rink? Well, <laughs> estimates are revised. You know, anybody who's in, been involved with the building project knows that the greatest uncertainty is when you're still doing site work. Once you have a foundation and you're building a building, a lot of, uh, a lot of the project is now really cemented down and there's much less uncertainty. But when you're still excavating and uncovering things that are underground, sometimes you get nasty surprises. And some of that was going on here. But I, I think we're past all that now, though. Well, yeah, they've identified, you know, apparently there was some things that, that nobody really knew were there. It was built in, I don't know, 68, 69, 70, somewhere around in that yeah. time frame. I don't think there were any schematics or any really as built still in existence at that point in time. So uh, from that, going back that far. So when you take the building down, you discover certain things, like we did with the police department. Well, and then certain things changed. You know, that there's a very stringent stormwater regulation now, and actually provision for several hundred thousand dollars worth of stormwater work was in the original design. But then it ended up costing even more uh, because the water flows into clay pit pond that actually has to be trapped and filtered, and it turns out to be a whole type of cost that didn't exist a couple of years ago. So th th those regulations, were those those state mandate regulations, federal mandate, or were those town mandated? Something it's, we that got passed somewhere along the way. In, it's not town. town. It, when they, you know, it's, it, they're called EPA, but whether it's state EPA or federal EPA, I'm not sure. Some state or federal, someone other than the town. So yeah. the town didn't create their own problem by mm -hmm. passing stormwater bylaw. Or whatever. Well, whatever bylaw we have, I think reflects state requirements. So, it's, you got okay. You so, so, it. so, what's what's going to be happening with that? There's a shortfall in the estimates. The bids aren't in. What I heard the other day was that they, we had they had an estimate for the pre-built building, shell of the building, I guess, that's gone out with bids and it came in lower, and they've ordered the. Uh, building the, is the, not the, the shell or whatever. No, not not yet. I think we're waiting for town meeting before any um, contracts are entered into for actual purchasing okay. things. Okay, but um, you know you can't really proceed with a project until you're sure you have the money to pay for it. So what's happened up to now is a series of designs and then cost estimates to figure out how much that design will cost, and that that's what has been evolving ever since last fall. But I think we're at. I think it's landed. Uh, the number is $32 million for the design. And the design is good. It's a Design little... and build. Design and build, yeah. Design and build. Yep. Finished uh, building. Finished building. And uh, it's, it's trimmed down a bit from what was uh, 
originally sketched out in the fall, but it's still a perfectly good building because it contains all the features that we were looking for on day one. You know, in addition to an, uh, a good sheet of ice, it has all the locker room, changing room, concession stand, skate rental features that people wanted to make it a real community facility. And that's all in there now for $32 million. Okay. The original price was roughly twenty nine nine. Let's call uh, it thirty million. Thirty. Yeah. 30. And uh, I think we found a way to close the gap, uh, including just yesterday, we got notification from Senator Will Brownsberger that the state is willing to contribute seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that real money? Like uh, cash in mitt, as one of the old time buddies might say, uh, or is it? Pie in the sky. No, is that like I, real money? I think it's real money. Uh, and it, the, the reason, uh, the principal reason it was awarded is that the design now includes a very state-of-the-art, almost uh, zero carbon um, refrigeration system. So we, because the original plan called for Freon, and then the revised plan called for a, an updated kind of Freon, but the new plan is for something based on CO2. I don't know exactly how it works, but its environmental impact is about nil. And it not only chills the ice, but it captures waste heat to heat the building. So there's uh, meaningful operational savings. It's really a great solution, and it's going to be made possible by uh, the grant from uh, the state. Somewhere along the way, I heard in, in some of the many things I sort of pop in and out on TV, that also saves some water. Saves water, yeah. So it's 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 a 21st century okay. technology that uh, will put us in a kind of a leading edge kind of rink because it's that will be the standard in the future, but not that many rinks have it yet because there aren't that many new rinks built each year. Okay, and, and we, we have Senator uh, Brownsberger to thank for that. 100 yes. percent. So well, thank you, Senator Will Brownsberger, for uh, getting out there and. Bringing home some bacon, he as they brought, say. He brought, there's a lot of bacon there. <laughs> as uh, Tip O'Neill used to say, bring home the bacon. It's, ba it's not pork, it's bacon. <laughs> yes, it's bacon. <laughs> Better than pork. <laughs> uh, okay, so you think you, and there's ways to, without telling me, so is this going to come to town meeting? Are we going to have to ask for town meeting coming up for some money somewhere along the way, or is it coming internally well, they, from other places? The, the 750 will go... Uh, quite a ways to closing the gap, not completely. So uh, we're finalizing now a, a plan to close the rest of the gap, and it will not involve a tax increase, I can tell you that. Well, that's, that's as a taxpayer, that's, that's nice to hear. It'll come from somewhere, but okay, that's good. So there's a reason why I'm not an accountant, but if you roughly need two million and you get 750, that's a million two five, right? Yeah, something that's like a far that. cry from four million that I think they were facing. So yeah. kudos to the committee for finding some savings along there somewhere. Well, Maybe the bids will come in lower than what the estimates are. I, there's reason to believe the bids will come in lower. You know, the, the, uh, there is a good team on this project and they're working very hard uh, since the winter time to get the cost down, which is a balancing act of uh, altering the design, working on the costs, working on the margins and all of that. But I think it's all coming together between uh, the architect, the builder, and the OPM, and the committee. I, I think it'll work. Well, I can't speak for the builder, but you and I worked on the police station DPW project together with the architect, Galante, Ted Galante, yeah. and with the, uh, I guess, the owner's rep or yeah. construction manager for us, yeah. CHA, Tom Gadzunas, who was a long time he was the town officer of he was community development or engineer or whatever he was for many years here yeah. in town. Very capable. So I know the quality of those two, those two people. And uh, well, I think and they got a good team. They so. could. And Ted, Ted is bringing the same ingenuity that he brought to the police station to the rink. And I think people will be very happy with the result. Well, self-praise, no praise at all. But I'll give it to both of us and them and the rest of our committee on the police department. But we did that. We did those two buildings, brought those up to... Uh, far exceeded what anybody expected for no money to the taxpayer, internally paid for a very good price combined. I well, think $13 million combined for the whole both things. So We don't so, have to dwell on the fact that we are a very tough act to follow. So. Yeah, well, that's true, so. you know, but that's okay. They, they'll work on it. So, all right, so what do we got? Okay, so we got another 15, 20 minutes, so let's go here. So uh, let's find something else. Okay, 
it's it's kind of complicated. McLean TMMA, which is yes. what the uh, Traffic Monitoring and Mitigation Agreement. Yes. Apparently, in what 1999, the town and McLean did something when they developed McLean to deal with traffic that needs to be needs to be changed. Well, so yes. what's up with it? How, what's going on? So back in 1999, <laughs> people. Uh, might remember that there was a very complicated transaction where McLean conveyed a lot of land to the town. And uh, there was an expectation at that time of all sorts of development at McLean, including a, a kind of a nurse, an assisted living facility mm -hmm. and residential development. Uh, and uh, lands were exchanged all over the place, including, including uh, what's now in the McLean barn and all what's town land. It all was a big, big agreement. There was an expectation that if all these projects were built uh, at various places on the McLean campus, that there would be increased traffic and there was concern about uh, impact on the side streets and that sort of thing. The TMMA was the traffic agreement to try to control those expected fallouts uh, from traffic. The thing is, that agreement was 25, is now 25 years old. Understood. And a lot of the uh, conditions that it anticipated never happened. And they're just, they don't matter anymore. Other intersections that were identified in the agreement have already been upgraded, signalized where they weren't signalized before and improved. So they're really not uh, a concern anymore. What's really left is the fact that the um, developer of what's called um, District 3, that's uh, Jack Dolly's Northland Development Corporation. Th those are the, that's the series of uh, units and townhouses that are being built. That was approved already yes. uh, by either town meeting or the zoning planning board. Well, that's, it's an approved project. It's approved by everybody, and including, I double, I double checked, it was a September 2020 town meeting. It had probably the biggest winning margin of any zoning effort ever brought before town meeting. It was 256 to 5. So um, the thing is, that was four years ago. There's always somebody like the five. <laughs> <There's> always, <yeah. laughs> if you said the sun rises in the morning and sets in the afternoon, you'd have people that would object. <laughs> but, but I would settle for 97%. <laughs> I, I take so, that. That's a good margin. Uh, but what happened is, uh, the, it turns out the original TMMA had some pretty onerous conditions that actually have made it impossible for for the developer to obtain financing. So even though he's ready to break ground this year, if the old TMMA uh, remained, probably nothing would happen. And because uh, it's not just that Northland Development wants to build, I think a significant majority in town want that project to happen. It's gonna provide additional housing, senior housing, affordable housing, nice additional townhouses that would be similar to what was to the woodlands up there it'll be a very good development and some tax money and some tax money uh, but to do it the original agreement needed to be changed to remove what were really uh, obsolete financial penalties for things that just made it impossible for dolly to get his financing so what i proposed a month ago or six weeks ago was for the select board to take the lead in revising the agreement, which is within the select board's power, to really focus on what counts today. And that is to make sure that the principal access road, or really the only access road for this project, which is Olmstead Drive, it's the little street that enters Pleasant Street just behind Star Market, to make sure that's safe. Um, and as long as that's safe, then really the purpose of the TMMA has been achieved or will be achieved. So where it came out in this revision, which uh, I sent it around to all the town meeting members last week so they could get an advanced look before town meeting, uh, it's all based on traffic counts. And the, the, the traffic counts are made periodically at the request of the town engineer, just like in the original agreement. We preserve the traffic thresholds that were in the original agreement. And what the, what the revision says is if traffic increases to a point that you pass the thresholds, which indicate that uh, the intersection may be unsafe for the volume of traffic entering, 
from Pleasant Street, then there has to be a signal. And the agreement says that Northland and McLean will jointly pay for a state-of-the-art signal to handle traffic if that becomes a problem. That's fundamentally important because the original agreement originally had some funding mechanisms, but it's all, money's all been spent because it was 25 years ago. So we were s stuck <laughs> until now. We're, right now we're stuck because uh, the agreement has these financial penalties that are just beside the point right now. It shouldn't be there. And there's no money to upgrade the signal that's really needed, uh, or if it's needed. Uh, so the new agreement is aimed at doing exactly that, and that's what's going to come before town meeting. I hope it's approved, and then Dolly will start to break ground later in the year. That'd be great. That would be great. That would be great. Good for, good for them, and okay. So I don't know where that comes from. we got, I don't know, four or five, I don't know how many days. Start in May 29th. June so. 5th. June, fi June 5th. There you go. You've got yeah. a pretty, okay, good. I just, I show up, and whatever. So, I get an idea, but sometimes you go beyond some... You know, the big long ones, like the budget, it takes, what, an hour? Maybe. To vote yeah. $150 million in various ways, by and large. But, you know, I remember one, you want to put a license on the cat, Fluffy, as Dr. Alpo <laughs> tried to do, or raise the dog fee from 5 bucks to 10 bucks. To, then you got a fight to, on your hand. Debate will rage for hours and hours. But... Uh, We'll see, about, I just we'll wanna, see how that works. I want to make it clear. The TMMA is something the, the select board actually has sole authority to negotiate the terms of that agreement. Okay. But the, the, the original deal in 1999 is that if it's ever changed uh, by uh, the select board working with McLean and whoever else, the, the town meeting can vote it up or down. They don't change it, but they vote it up or down. Okay, so, that's fair enough. I, hope I think I think the town meeting would appreciate that. So you know, yeah. we'll see how that works. Maybe the five will change their mind and uh, vote for it. That would be great. Whoever those were. So, okay. On to the next thing. Okay. We've talked about Fluffy and Dog, okay. so it's a good segue. Paws in the Parks. Is that what they call it? Yeah. P-A-W-S. Paws in the Parks. Paws in the Parks. Tell me about Paws in the Parks. Is it working? Not working? I, What's going on with Paws in the Parks? I, I believe it's working. So, uh, you know, it was rolled out to try to control what were really conflicts between uh, dog owners who would bring their dogs to the parks and let them run around without leashes, and then team sports and other people who were using the playing fields, and uh, they, we needed to separate them. So Paws in the Parks now is a program to specify um, days and times of day when dog owners can use the fields as they had been using before. Yeah, I don't think legally. I don't think they were ever really allowed. Well, we made it legal. Yeah, I, uh, I understand that part, but for, ye yeah. for years yeah, and years, it was, we weren't supposed to be doing that. Yeah, it, was just, it just happened. But uh, it's now been formalized. We had a bylaw change. Or it was a clarification of who's really in charge of this program. It's, it's going to be the rec commission and the rec department with some input from the select board. Okay, uh, so there are certain days and certain hours that, yeah. that dog owners can let their dogs run. Yeah, and the hours, they're all posted. There's a schedule on the recreation department, on, on the rec department website. Uh, it's all been rolled out as a trial program because we want to do it for a couple of months just to see uh, if anything needs to be tweaked. And then uh, I imagine we'll do it again next year and make it permanent with whatever improvements uh, need to be done. Well, okay. Well, maybe you are you receiving any prob any issues? I mean, occasionally I see on social media, to the extent yeah. social media, social media, but some posts of complaints, uh, valid or not, I don't know. They're posted, but yeah. of of owners not cleaning up after their respective pets and leaving, you know, uh, feces on the playing fields, uh, which doesn't, you know, not not appealing. Agreed. Uh, so. To the dog owner's credit, or at least to the majority, the, there's a group of dog owners who have volunteered to try to um, work on the backsliding dog owners, get them to behave better. Um, you know, judging from emails to the select board, it's working well because it got a lot of comment uh, January, February, when we were still working on the program, and the volume of emails has dropped to zero. So 
I hope I don't trigger something by saying that. I don't get an avalanche. It's they were not getting spammed out. We're not being we're not being put into the spam folder. No, it's not, it's not. No, I look at everything. But you know, but people should understand just how heavily the parks are used. You know, it, it's probably inevitable given the number of people that that either you'll have a lazy, if I can use that word, owner, or an accident will happen. But in general, I think it's pretty good, and the, there's a mechanism in place to make it even better. Well, before we get into the closing topic here, if you could do something, if you could figure out how to deal with the geese. The geese. That, that would be something. You know, back when I was, like, back in the golden age of politics, as my late mother would say, in the yeah. mid-'90s, we had the Goosebuster program, which where we were able to, dogs, owners could take their dogs and, you know, get a permit or whatever and have them run on then the high school because the geese were fouling the all the fields. Yes. And uh, that, that worked. We, I think we called it the Goosebusters program. But now they have actually companies that'll bring their dogs down. And from what I hear, anecdotally, the geese don't come back after a few run-ins with those programs. So food to think about. Well, the thing that I understand, actually, you're better off when the dogs are specially trained, <laughs> Steve, so that... Uh, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. a company that brings, you know... Goosebucks to dogs, for, for yeah, lack of a better so, term, but trained dogs to... Yeah, with, to special, with, yeah, with specialist dogs, it might, yeah, uh, it might well, work. Yeah, well, there you go. All right, anyway, so we got, uh, I don't know, about four minutes, three and a half, four minutes left. So, you've been chair for a year, uh, and I think your, your year with the change goes to at the end of June? End of June, yeah. At which time there'll be a re-vote and there'll be a, a, probably an installation of a, of a new chair. Well, I think we voted already. It's automatic that it, it rotates to Elizabeth Dion. Okay. She'll be yep, July 1. So, all right, what are your thoughts on the past year? Give me some reflections from the chair. I was never the chair, which is probably a good yeah. thing. <laughs> well, now you can't get away from being chair. You're, yeah, I know. So. <laughs> I, you know, I think the biggest problem I have, Steve, it may sound... Um, sappy to say it, but I, I like it too much. It's, you know, to tell you what my day was like this past Monday, we started with meetings at 8 in the morning to discuss everything from the rink to the budget to MBTA communities and every other thing. Uh, we had a select board meeting at 7 in the evening and talked about the rink and TMMA. Uh, we ended up with an executive session that didn't start until close to 11. I got home at 11.30 at night. Um, and I think that's actually what it, people don't realize that's what it actually takes to make local government work. Uh, but I was happy to do it and I am, I am happy to do it. Uh, so do you have any, uh, what would you think is your biggest, at least during your tenure as chair, your, your what accomplishment are you most proud of? Or what, of, what, of what are you most proud of? Well, that way. Uh, I think the biggest things are the budget process. I think it was much better this year. I was proud, uh, proud to play a part of that. I think the civil service vote at town meeting was very important. I played a leading role there. I think the assessor was important. I'm helping the rink along the, with the financing piece of it, at least. Not, not the design, but the financing. And, uh, you know, I think it, it'll leave uh, things behind that should actually make a difference for a long time. Okay. I'm very gratified to work with so many people. You know, we have a fantastic town staff that uh, they're just a pleasure to work with. Okay. Any, any uh, well, pri any, anything that, regrets isn't the right word, but is there anything that, that uh, uh, well, I, don't, I, I really don't know how to phrase the question. Okay. Anything you're not happy about or that wish, you wish you could do or wish got done better? You know, Steve, I'm, I'm sure there's something, but I've suppressed the memory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happens a lot. That's, that's a good <laughs> habit to have. So, uh, okay. Well, all right. Well, we got less than a minute, so uh, any final comments? No, but I, I hope you uh, uh, invite Elizabeth Dion on early, and uh, I, I think we have a very capable board. And I, I look forward to rotating. Uh, I'll just be the member uh, starting July 1. But uh, I look forward to finishing my second full term, which is um, it has been really a terrific experience. Well, I've been. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. You've been a delight. I've pushed back a little bit, and but that's okay. You've handled it with, uh, with grace and uh, dignity, even though at times we... 
Well, as I often say, that's why they make chocolate and vanilla. Yeah, well, we tried. So, uh, <laughs> and on that note, I want to thank you. Soon to be member again, yes, Select sir. Board. Well, there you have it. Our last chat with the chair, uh, with Roy Epstein, chair of the Select Board. I'm Steve Rosales. Till next time, take care.